68. Holy, holy, holy. As I stated earlier this uh, evening, I had another message planned, but the Lord redirected me, and he said, go to Revelation, and I said, yes, sir, and what we're going to be talking about tonight is we're going to cover, uh, we're going to go back through, rather, he wants us to go back through the seven churches in the book of Revelations from chapter 1 to chapter 4. And in this, what the Holy Ghost told me, Brother James, is in each church, look for something that you might be similar to or have thought about. Because you know the Bible says whatsoever a man thinketh in his heart, therefore he's already done. Mm -hmm. So I want us to look at each church. We're going to be covering this for the next few Wednesday night service as our study. And I want us to, I'm going to break down each church for each <coughs> spot. And I'm going to get deep. I'm going to take you to the city. I'm going to let you know what was there, what they worshipped, and, and how they acted. But the key here, I believe this with all my heart, is we look for in that church whether or not it's something that we might in today, not in just the church, but in our normal day-to-day -day lives that needs to be changed. But I wanted to definitely hit chapter 1 because this, Susu, this is the Jesus that we're going to be standing in front of, whether it be when the eastern sky parts in the rapture or he takes us home because our time is, is due. Amen? Amen? And I've got some scriptures saved that I wanted to share with y'all because really what I'm, where I'm going with this whole thing is the great falling away today. The great falling away today. If you look at the church attendance in today's time, Sister Kim, it is low. It's at an all-time low. 
As a matter of fact, the Southern Baptist Convention has gotten worried about it because of numbers. See, they, they look at numbers. Amen? I look at saints. I look at soldiers. I look at servants. Amen? But let's break the Word of God tonight in the book of Revelations. We're going to begin in this, in this study in Revelations chapter 1. And may God bless the reading of His Word. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Here we go. Now remember, this is who is at the right hand of the Father right now. But John brings us in and he tells us what's going on. And here we go. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which were are written in it. For the time is what? Mm -hmm. Near. John to the seven churches which are Asia, which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, amen to that, and has made us kings and priests uh, to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever, amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom of patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God, for all the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as a trumpet saying, and here we go, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, and when you see, write in the book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see, and this is where it gets really good. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands was one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet. Now, pay attention to who, how, who he's uh, describing here, because this is, I can't say it enough, Sister Joab, this is Jesus Christ today. A man clothed with a garment down to his feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And this is interesting. Right here, listen to this. And his eyes like the flame of fire. His feet were refined brass as it refined in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am in a life forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys to Hades and of death. Write 
these things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Do you all understand what he's saying? The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Those angels of the churches are the pastors of these church, the preachers of these churches. That is the angels that Jesus is talking about. The seven lampstands are the seven churches that will be addressed and will be described as we get into this deeper and deeper. But y'all didn't know that I was an angel, did you? <laughs> Amen. That's what the Bible says to the angels of the church. That's where the letters are going. Uh, you may be seated. I wanted us to first see in this first chapter, because we could have went straight to the seven churches, Brother Keith, and we could have started diving in to what the problem was with that church that Jesus had with it. But I wanted us to see this Jesus in the new. This He's not the carpenter. He's not the, the furniture builder here. He is clothed and his hair is white as wool. But what gets me, Brother James, is John said that his eyes pierces like fire. I'm going to tell you something. That right there tells me that when I stand in front of this master, this king of kings, this holy of holy, it's those eyes that, 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 that he'll be able to see everything we are and everything we're not. And it don't matter what you say, trust me, those eyes are going to pierce that heart. You won't lie to him. You won't lie to him. And he's there dressed in his robe. Hannah is down to the floor and his breastplate is of fine brass. And he's just, he's beautiful. There's no other way to describe it but beautiful. And even John said that the glow that was around him like was, was like the sun at its, at its brightest, Brother James. In other words, he couldn't even look at it. He was so bright. That is who is going to pierce the sky and call us home. That is who we will stand in front of at the judgment seat of Christ and everything that we've done since the day we got saved till the day we stand in front of him, that's what's going to be addressed when we sit down with him and we sit at the judgment seat of Christ. Do you all understand that nothing before that day you got saved, that's been forgotten. But everything that we've done, Hannah, for Jesus Christ or for ourselves is going to be judged that day. And it's going to be in front of this king. And yes, he loves us. Yes, he protects us, Sister Kim, and he provides for us. But he's also the judge. And he's fixing to address seven churches of Asia Minor. Seven different churches. And he's going to tell them what he what he he'll, he'll say to every one of them. But this I have against thee. He he talks in the beginning about everything that they're doing, but then he comes with, but this I have against thee. You know, I got to thinking about that, Sister Joab. And I, and when I as I was thinking about how we were going to approach this. The first thing that comes to my mind, yeah, we're we're at, we're probably uh, there's no doubt we are in the church of Laodicea. This is the church of Laodicea right now. We can just go right there and have a good heyday talk. But if I want us to see the the issues that were in the seven churches or six churches before Laodicea, I want us to make sure that we, if any of these areas, Sister Melba is taking place at East Juliet Baptist Church, we can correct it and we can get it right. And, and this is even within our own lives. Amen? Because it's not the ultimate goal to serve Jesus and Jesus alone. It's not the ultimate goal is to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I mean, that's what I want to hear, Brother James. Yeah, there's going to be things that's going to be burnt. 
He said, whatever we've done for our own selves is going to be cast into the to the fire. But the things that we've done for him will be rewarded for. Him. We're going to receive crowns. Crowns. We don't deserve a crown. Amen? You know what we're going to do with them? We're going to lay them at his feet. That's where they need to be anyway. If it's not, it's not me, it's he. Amen? But I got to thinking about the falling away, the great falling away. It's in Scripture. And, I, and if, you, if you're taking notes or if you want to remember this, because remember, this whole thing that we're studying in the seven churches is about the great falling away. And it's mentioned in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 6. And this is what God's Word says. Listen to this. He, for it is impossible... In the case of those, and this is serious business, Sister Joanne, for it is impossible. That tells me right away, whoop, what is? What's impossible? Listen to what the writer says. In the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the Word of God, and the powers of the age to come and then fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding Him up to contempt. Do y'all understand what that's saying? Number one, it's impossible. In the case of those who have once been enlightened, in other words, Brother James, it's, the writer is talking about when we it's when we got saved, amen. And then we we're, we serve God. We got a taste of the Holy Ghost. We got to experience the Holy Spirit in our lives, whether it be touching us, healing us, or using us in any way. Not only that, we got the the the, the writer mentions the heavenly gift. That means eternal life. We were given this. But there was a price paid for it. Jesus had to die. And the writer's saying, not only that, and, and they have fallen away. They've backslidden or they've turned their back on it. That's what's taking place today. Why? Why is this happening? Why is there such a great falling away? It, it, it's exactly what it is. The world. Listen to what 1 Timothy 4 1 says. Now, the Spirit impressively says that in latter times some will depart from the faith by developing them or devoting themselves, listen to this, to deceitful spirits and of teaching of, de of demons. That is what's really going on. There is an evangelistic, like I preached Sunday. There is an evangelistic theme going around where they don't want the world to feel uncomfortable when they come into church. They want them to come on in, Brother Keith, and it feel comfortable to them. I'm going to tell you something. If you come in a church to feel comfortable, and you do, you need to, you're, you're where you need to be. Because I come to church to feel uncomfortable. I want to know what's going on in my life and what I need to correct. And the Holy Ghost will reveal it if you come. By the way, those churches, Holy Ghost didn't man. He's not going to set up camp in a place where he's not welcome. He's not going to set up camp in a church that's ungodly, that has got more of the world in the church than the church themselves are in the world. You know, we are the church. Beloved, each and every one of us is Ishtoreth Baptist. This is just a building. We are the church. Listen to um, what Revelations, and we'll get here, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And this is the first church. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, Repent and do all the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. You know what that means? If we 
are in a way. And we know we're in this way. And the Holy Ghost has told us to get out of that way. And we don't do it. Our lapstand is a, it takes is, is in, in jeopardy. Your lapstand is your Holy Ghost spirit of eternal life. And it's in trouble. It's in it's, it's in it, but you better take notice. Everybody thinks that just because they're saved, and even if, if they are saved, Sister Mama, that they ain't got they ain't got to worry about it. They're going to heaven. I'm going to tell you something. I've, I've got many arguments with this with my brothers. Where they say, no, wait a minute. The Bible says our soul is sealed to the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. I disagree with that. Because the Bible makes it very clear that backsliders will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So in other words, if you're in a backslidden condition when the trumpet sounds, you're not going. That's what the Bible tells me, Sister Joanne. Now, it also says our soul sealed to the day of redemption. I, I'm not arguing with that. I'm not saying the word of God is not true. But this is a gamble, beloved, I'm not willing to take anymore. And by the way, I probably hold the record for the most backslidden in the record of, of spiritual history. It's only but by the grace of God, Brother James, and I'll tell you what God told me this last go around. This is it. He made it clear to me, this is it. No more. So if I backslide again so soon, I'm going to be like those Romans in chapter 1 where he, I've been turned over to the lust of my body and I'm going to stay there. I'm not coming back because he's going to turn me over to a reprobate mind. And he will do that. He done King Nebuchadnezzar like that. So if you doubt God, try him. Sister Melvin, I don't want to. I don't want to go down that road ever again. I don't want to be the way I used to be. I said that today out loud in my office. I don't want to be how I used to be. My soul, I was horrible. Horrible. Listen to 2 Peter chapter 2. We're going to cover a lot of scriptures about this. And this will be the last one tonight because I've got plenty of them. But I, I want to take us through. Because when we get into the first church, I want everybody's mind thinking, first off, the great falling away. Our brothers and sisters that we love, that, that used to come through that door, we hugged them, we loved them, we held them, we prayed with them, we even eat with them. Where are they at? Where are they at? Listen to 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 23-22. For if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of the righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit and the sow after washing himself returns to wallow in or the sow rather the sow, after washing herself, returns to waller in the mire. And if you've ever dealt with pigs, you know what mire is. Brother James, that's a place I wouldn't want to be more waller in. Amen? But it's clear what the Bible says. And, and, and in today's times, <coughs> I can't get over the, the statistics of where church attendance is right now. Wait till something bad happens, and it's going to. You see, COVID, you can't count that one because that everybody stayed at home. Uh, you know, everybody but us, amen? We came to church. But, but, but we were confined, you know, we were cautious, and, and everything was shut down, and this was worldwide. Now, usually when God judges, it's usually a nation. This was worldwide. And if the church, and I believe she was, listen to me now. Some might disagree with me, and that's okay. I'm not, I don't know everything. But I believe that this was a test for the church. And if it was, Brother James, 
she failed. The church failed Jesus Christ. The church should have been the first one to stand up. And I'm going to tell you something. If they had, not a single one of them would have got sick, by the way. And stand up and say, you will not make me not worship my Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you put that much faith in what you're saying and you believe it when you say it, I honestly believe nobody in these, even in the big, I would have loved for a big church to do it. My soul, I'd probably fell out over that. I'd have been in heaven right now. I'd have had a heart attack. But you tell me something. You think about COVID. What was the first thing that they wanted to shut down? The very first thing church. was church. I find that rather ironic. Don't you, Sister Joanne? Actually, I find it hilarious. The first thing the world wanted to do was shut the church down. And I'm telling you, it worked because the church is still shut down. That's why church attendance is so low. And I believe this too. With all my heart, God love them and God help them. It was convenient for them. Sister Kim, they can sit at home and not have to get dressed and not have to get in the car and and they can watch it on 